VR, mate, love it, I do. But it's the one thing in the world, well, I'm sure there's other things, it's nigh on impossible to make a decent video because I cannot show you what this is like to use. The only way you can actually see what this is like to use is to put the damn thing on your own damn head. Beyond that, it's impossible for us to present this to you. All we can do really is show you a screen mirror or a screencast of what this puts out. And then just pipe that to your 2D monitor, which is in no way reflective of what the real visuals like that you see with your own eyes through these lenses. And then all you've got to go off really is the presenter's opinion as to whether this is good or not compared to other VR devices. And then you've got to decide whether you trust the presenter's opinion. to decide whether you trust the presenter's opinion. Whether that holds any weight with you, ah, it's a tricky one. Personally, me, I mean, I've been into VR since day one, 2016. I bought the first HTC Vive. When it first came out, I've got five VR headsets. I've been out to see Enterprise VR Studios, the likes of VR engineers uh, who make Xtal. What I'm trying to say is I feel like I'm in a pretty decent place to judge VR. I spent a not so insignificant amount of my life in there. So when Oculus sent this Quest 2 out, honestly, having not seen the Quest 1, I wasn't expecting much, if I'm honest, like really how good can a 300 quid wireless VR headset from Facebook really be? Well, using the expression that Facebook so eloquently coined themselves, it's complicated. All right, maybe by now you've bounced around enough videos about the Quest 2 that you know the stats inside out already. I don't know, maybe you're looking for that validation from enough people telling you that it's a great choice. You're making you make the right decision buying it. If that's you, I feel you. Uh, for everyone else, uh, the stats. Okay. Yeah, the stats. On paper, the stats are pretty good. It's quite competitive. Uh, it's come a long way since day one. Weighs in at 503 grams, so it's pretty light. Actually, it's quite comfortable in terms of weight. Resolution per eyes, 1832 by 1920, which is decent. Refreshing at 72 or 90 hertz. I was hoping Facebook would have enabled the 120 hertz mode whilst I had it, but no sign of it yet. But allegedly there is a 120 hertz mode coming to this device. Uh, it's got three stepped IPD distances, 58, 63, and 68 millimeters. Uh, there is a slight issue with one of them. I'll get onto that later, but it's minor. Tracking is what they call simultaneous localization and mapping based inside out six degrees of freedom. Basically, the headset does the tracking. It's inside out tracking. Uh, it does, you don't need external sensors. Uh, audio is piped into your ear holes via headphone style integrated speakers, which are in the head strap. Uh, it's, the head strap's a bit of a flimsy elastic affair. Uh, there's a USB-C charging port on the headset, which you charge it up using the provided charger. It's got, obviously got a battery in here that keeps it going. And the controllers, uh, they take non-rechargeable AA batteries, which are included in the box. Reet, best way I can put this, mate. This thing's class. <laughs> Legit, it really is. It's mint. If a family member or a friend, friends, lockdown friends, what, what are they? <laughs> if someone who wasn't a tech nerd was to say, look, Neil, we want to get into VR, but we've got no idea what to, what, what to do. We just want to play some games, you know, a bit of fitness stuff, a bit of casual stuff. I'd say get the Quest 2 in a heartbeat. What this thing is capable of doing and running standalone within itself, all powered on and within the headset is nothing short of a technical masterpiece made possible by that Snapdragon XR2 chip inside of here and then how Oculus have obviously made it happen. Like forgetting all about PCs and powerful laptops, right? Take all that away. Consider this as a complete standalone entity, not paired up with a computer, right? You, you still do have to pair it up with your mobile phone, right? Your smartphone, you, and you do need that Facebook account in good standing. But for real, I was eye boggled at how clear, crisp, and fluid the graphics were in here, bearing in mind you don't need a PC. And up until this point, I'd only ever seen this kind of graphics being piped into a headset using a PC. It's mental how good this is. The tracking is nigh on flawless. Not once is it missed a beat or floated a controller off into space. Like Oculus have got this experimental hand tracking feature mode, which mate, 
This is some wacky, mad MIT nutty professor level tech occurring here. When you turn this on, right, it tracks your actual real hands in VR and turns them into like avatar 3D model representations of your hands. This is trippiness factor 12, but it's real. It's happening. It's far from perfect, but it's experimental. And I'm absolutely confident that, you know, give them six months, they'll have this absolutely nailed. Like, you know, if your hands are pointing in a certain direction, you can't track them. Okay, kind of minor things, they'll get, it, they'll get it sorted out. But think of the possibilities of being able to use your hands in VR. Sure, I wasn't thinking of that, but whatever tickles your literal pickle. I was thinking more like training environments, object interaction. I don't know what I'm trying to, I don't know why I'm trying to list all the things you could possibly do with your hands. But the thing is, they won't stop there. They'll probably move on to the likes of full body tracking, right? Like, why not? Look down and see, mate, not that. I mean, like your legs, your feet. Well, why not? You know, like imagine VR football or any kind of sports where you can track your actual limbs. It's all happening. It's genuinely reassuring to see that all this progression and innovation is still happening in these fields. But yeah, like standalone mode is absolutely perfect for your average user. You get your Oculus home environment, this little cozy little space that you call your own. You can sit on your sofa and call up your launch pad and browse all your stuff, fiddle with your settings, your Wi-Fi, all your devices are all there. You can launch your apps as a web browser. You can browse the internet in VR. And to be honest, for most people, that's all they need. You know, they can just sit down and immerse themselves in whatever they find in the Oculus store. Whether they want to smash up some Beat Saber, smashing some faces in a boxing sim, which is pretty good for fitness, that is. There's puzzle games in there. There's global exploration experiences, right? You can walk over Everest or drone fly over any part of the world you want, you know. Or you can do some light, cosmetic, gimmicky, conceptual design work, you know. Uh, you just download them all straight out of the storage, on the headset, and off your trot. Whether you bought the 64 gig or the 256 gig storage version, mate, there's enough storage on here to put on pretty much whatever you want. And you can do that without ever needing a computer. And you can use this anywhere as well. That's, that's the mad thing about this, mate. You can go outdoors with this. It's not without its issues. I'll cover those at the end. But on balance, this is undoubtedly the go-to VR device now for newcomers and casuals. Lots of very talented people have been paid lots of money to make sure that this setup is easy to do. It's easy to get going with, provided you don't mind the whole Facebook thing. But yeah, look, they've got to fund the R&D somehow. 300 quid ain't covering the costs on this. Anyone wanting a solid recommendation for getting into VR, mate, this, no doubt. But I did say it was complicated. Okay, it's complicated good, and it's complicated in a complicated way. Read, this is quite the versatile device. Sure, you can use it standalone, like I've just explained. And for most people, that's all they'll ever do with it. That's what most people are going to be looking at this for. But in addition to that, you can buy a 30 quid long USB-C cable from Amazon, plug it in, plug, plug the headset into a PC, a VR capable PC, and use what they call Oculus Link. That'll convert this into a PC powered VR headset, basically letting it join the ranks and sharing the spoils of five years worth of VR development and customization. Now you can play your Steam VR games through this. If you've got a library of VR titles from the original, well, yeah, from the original Oculus devices as well. You can now use them as well through this. Right, I'm gonna have to interject here whilst I'm editing because I've just come across something that I find absolutely disgusting. Uh, it's gonna make the video unnecessarily longer by a couple of minutes, but it's gotta be said, even though it's probably been said a lot of times already, but it's still happening. And that last point that I just said there where you can reuse assets and experiences and games that you've bought in one area of the Oculus store and then use them across devices. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> Not with all games. So the story is, whilst I was recording this video, I bought Beat Saber for the Quest 2 on the reasonable understanding and assumption that once I've bought Beat Saber, I'll be able to go downstairs and use it on my Rift S in the living room. Once I've finished with this video and I've recorded the footage that I need and I've sent the Quest 2 back to Oculus, I've bought Beat Saber for Oculus, the platform. I'll be able to then go and use it for the Rift S. No, I can't. No, I can't. Not only have I bought Beat Saber already for Steam VR for the PC platform, I then bought it for the Quest 2. I sent the Quest 2 back. I then got to go downstairs to my Rift S and Beat Saber are now requiring me to buy Beat Saber for the third time. I have to buy the base game for the third time for the Rift S, even though it's the Oculus platform, just like the Quest 2. That is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And Beat Saber, do you know, I, see, I saw a tweet from them defending this by saying, oh, it's hard work porting a game to the Quest 2. You know, it's it's not just a little job. It's a lot of hard work. Oh, bore off. Bore off. I'm sorry if you feel like you chose a job. That's a lot of hard work. You know, if you're regretting your career choices, you've, it's your job. 
It's your job. It's it was, And it was done in Unity. It's not like you had to redo the entire code base again. This, it just, the greed is off the charts. So I've refunded it. And I'm, I'm not buying it again, not just out of principle now. I, I just found that disgusting. And it's got to be mentioned, the fact that you've got to rebuy a game between Oculus devices when it's on the same platform. That's not okay. Not okay on any level. And just so we're clear, that that's not the fault of Oculus and Facebook. Although they have enabled that behavior, they've authorized that to happen. That's not necessarily on them. That's the developer's fault. But I just wanted to mention it because it is contrary to the point that I just mentioned. But yeah, it doesn't change the way that I feel about the device. I wouldn't change it. doesn't change my recommendation at all. It's just something that has to be taken into consideration. If you do plan on migrating from a Quest, do it. I don't even know if they're going to be doing any of the devices from this point onwards. But yeah, it's just something to think about anyway. That's, that's it. Anyway, back to Neil from the past. And as well as using this with proper visualization software, the likes of VRED and Enscape for Revit. So, you know, if you're thinking about kitting out a design engineering house and your engineers with VR headsets to use at work, like or a VR room at work, then yeah, this will work. It will work in VR mode for most professional applications with VR support. But the Facebook integration makes it complicated, man. Not really from a data privacy point of view necessarily, but from a can you ask your staff to make Facebook accounts for work point of view. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure about that. Like, can you can you make dummy accounts, corporate dummy accounts? Is that allowed? Is that against terms of service? I don't know. Can you ask staff to use their personal Facebook accounts for work stuff? I don't know. I don't know. It's complicated. Also, a recent update to the super popular virtual desktop paid app lets people cast supported Steam VR experiences to the Quest 2 over Wi-Fi. That's also pretty good, but it's flawed as well. More on that later. So yeah, look, all of that's a tick in the box to make this a pretty much a jack of all trades. But a master of what, right? This is where it gets even more complicated. So yeah, look, if you want that standalone VR for family pastime, no PC connection, just good old family fun time, then yeah, in a heartbeat, get the Quest 2. There's nothing like it. I did write that you won't regret it, blah, 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 but I, I can't be held accountable for what Monsieur Zuckerberg might have planned years down the line. So I ain't saying you're, you're going to regret it, but uh, if you know already that you're going to spend a lot of time in VR though with this on your head, and if you know already that you're going to be using an Oculus link cable, that's when more complications come in because this, as it is now, linked to a PC, feels like a bit of a jerry rig solution compared to dedicated wired VR headsets. If your main primary use is going to be wiring this to a PC, first you're going to have to buy that cable at least five meters long. That's 30 quid unless you buy, unless you've already bought the 90 quid one from Oculus, which is an absolute rip. Then you're going to have to upgrade the Elite strap because this elastic one is, it's okay for short use, but longer sessions, mate, it's not comfortable enough. It's 50 quid for the Elite strap, make it more comfortable. And then there's the audio. Look, if you're going to spend a lot of time in VR, then you're going to want decent sound piped in. The default sound is pig's ass. So what, what do you do? Do you start looking into 3D printed brackets to jerry-rig third-party accessories onto this? Or do you splice a set of decent headphones on top of this, confirming your allegiance to the Borg? Making this anything but a simple no-hassle solution at that point. Or do you just concede that what you're using it for your use case probably means you should be looking at a dedicated wired VR headset instead of butchering this into something that it really isn't. Yeah, that means you are looking at something more expensive, but chances are you've probably got a decent gaming PC already if you are looking at that. And in my opinion, it makes sense to pair that up with an appropriate headset. And you know, the bonus features, the likes of that Wi-Fi streaming over virtual desktop, I didn't have a good experience with that. This is just me. But like my use case, I was sat literally three feet away from a 400 quid Asus AX88U Wi-Fi 6 router on the 5G band. All the graphic settings crank all the way down. And it was an absolute horrendous experience. This was using a driving sim. I was getting this sort of pulsing lag in the headset. FPS, fine. Latency, absolute rock bottom. But it was unplayable. So again, for me, that, that feature was useless. But for someone else, that feature could be absolutely revolutionary. It's complicated, you know, but yeah, wrapping this up, I still do love this thing just because I wouldn't use those features. I'd still use this as a standalone headset, you know, and say what you want about Faceake. I ain't getting into the whole privacy thing, you know, stealing your data and all that. You know, it, it's, I'm not sure how many people really understand how hard it is to be an absolute ghost online 
and to all location services. Personally, I've turned down multiple VPN sponsorships on this channel because I generally find their marketing misleading. But anyway, aside from, aside from that, legit Facebook or Oculus, whoever was the lead on this, have done a great job with the integrated ecosystem. The services within, with, within the Quest 2 um, are amazing. Like being able to cast the headset to your phone or to your PC, use the web browser, share or live stream your experience straight to a friend over Facebook, manage all the settings, within the device, browse games. You can even use net, you can sit on the sofa and watch Netflix in VR. There's even a superbly well thought out feature that lets you tap the headset twice to enable the headset cameras. That then pauses VR and lets you see the outside world whilst you're wearing the headset. So you can pick up the controllers if they're on the ground or shoot the dog away. But it like turns this into like an actual camera on your head so you can see you know, the wife walks in or something, you can see who's around you. Yeah, irrespective of its flaws, uh, I was super impressed with this. And it gets a solid recommendation from me to friends or family. No doubt. Speaking of its flaws though, I do have some. I have to mention them because that's what I do. So the Guardian system, that's its virtual wall, which lets you know if you're near physical boundaries in the real world. That was my main beef with the Rift S and it's still a friggin' nuisance. It still asks you continuously all the time, every time to redo the Guardian system every time you put the headset on which I understand with this because it's wireless. So it could be in a different location every time you use it, but I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> and do you know what I mean? Just give me the option of disabling the guardian setup, mate. I'm a grown up. I'm an adult. I can look after myself. I'm in charge of my own safety. Thanks all the same. But if I headbutt a wall, it's on me. You know what I mean? Also, when you're using the guardian in stationary mode, it puts this like cylindrical tube around you as a guardian wall, which is, it's quite tight. The slightest movement or arm out are stretched, it sort of it makes this wall appear. And I can't stop that from happening. You know, when you sat down in a driving sim, you move your arms out, this wall appears. It's super annoying. And I can't find the setting that turns that off. And if that setting does exist, then it needs to be with the rest of the Guardian settings, not wherever it is. You know what I mean? A couple of other gripes with the lenses. Uh, the first one is with the IPD. If you've got the IPD set to max 68 millimeters, you do appear to lose some field of view as the outer edges of the lenses appear to be a bit clipped. Uh, this next one's minor. Uh, the lenses do poke out quite far towards your head, um, which means that when you're mounting this on and off your head, the lenses can brush against your forehead. Like just when you rest it on your head, when you're looking at your screen or when you're looking at the outside world, the lenses will touch your forehead, which puts streaks on the lenses. It's quite a nuisance. But but that's it, mate. That, that's that's it. That's all I've got. I absolutely love this. This is my choice for a standalone VR headset. It's astonishing. But conversely, it wouldn't be my recommendation for someone looking for a wired headset where their primary use case is powering this through a PC. I'd have to suggest investing a little more into one of the more premium dedicated devices. Uh, just a balance of convenience and the better quality of headsets just are going to be worth it for that use case. Uh, but, you know, if you're not bothered about having the best and the most comfortable of experiences, you know, you're not too bothered about that. You're just happy to compromise. Then this still does a great job at being a versatile jack of all them trades. But that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, I like to wait until the end of videos before asking people to or suggesting people subscribe to the channel because how do you know if you like me if you didn't see the video? You can't ask to like a video 10 seconds in. You don't know you like me. Super obnoxious. Check out my other videos though. I do make content around technology for industry, workstations and laptops dedicated and aimed at people who work and are in professional industries. It tends to be my jam. Check out the back catalogue. Mate, that's all I've got. Uh, let me know what you thought of this. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Doodles.